somewhere along the way, we've been getting caught up with this idea that um, following Jesus or being a Christian or, or being a follower of Christ, we, we, we've been getting caught up in this idea that um, it is all about following rules and religion. But actually, following Jesus is actually about coming into relationship with Him. It's not about rules. It's not about religion. It is actually all about relationship. And let's just, let's just focus on, on that, that, that one part of relationship real quick. Um, given the demographics here, most of us would probably be um, single or in an early stage of our relationship. Um, and if you're in that stage or if you've been in a long-term relationship, can, can you, are you got, or if you're in that season right now, um, do you remember that exciting feeling of um, being single and, and maybe you have that little crush? Do you guys remember that? Maybe, maybe, maybe don't laugh at me. You're probably sitting next to your crush right now. Right now. I bet you. I bet you. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Some of you single people, you guys came for Jesus. You came to encounter Jesus. You came to encounter Jesus, but you also came to encounter the love of your life. I remember. I, I've been there. I met Tyler, my girlfriend, at, at church. I remember getting there on a Friday because I used to go to youth because youth is the best thing in the world. I remember rocking up, looking at myself in the mirror and be like, okay, maybe tonight is the night. <laughs> I'd rock up to church, I'd rock up to youth and like you'd be there, you'd be worshipping, like, thank you, God. <laughs> maybe she can't see me, oh, thank you, God. Yeah, and you'll, you, might, you might just... Oh, thank you. And you, you'll, 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 you'll put on the angle and like, you'll be like, hey. Like, or, you'll, or you'll see them across the church and you're like, oh, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> hey, you want to sit with me? Like, pre-rolls is about to start. Um, don't, don't sit there blankly at me. You, you were probably sitting next to your cross right now. But just that exciting, that exciting part of, of that early stage where it's all exciting and the relationship and then you get and then you, 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 you start to know them and that starts to fade away. No, no I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. But you get to know them deeper and, and from you, when, when you just started to like them, it's, it starts to turn into a love. And you get to know them deeper and deeper. And, and, and y'all know what I mean. And, um, and, and it's, it's that relationship part. And you get to know more about them and their heart for you. And, and, and that's exactly, you know, the person that created relationships is Jesus, is God. The very concept of relationship was created by him and, and the adventures and there's highs and lows in every relationship. Tyler can tell you. All the times I have stuffed up. You will not find about, out about that tonight because I am perfect. <laughs> but the highs and lows of, of relationship, and that's, that's the whole thing with following Christ, following the Holy Spirit, it, sometimes it can feel like a wild goose chase. But the amazing thing is that it's, a, it's about a relationship. It's about a God that is always there for you through every season through every season of life. And I, and I love that, um, that through every season, through, through every difficulty that he's there for us. And talking about difficulties, talking about struggles, um, and, and talking about the enemy attacking my life, um, a, a key area where, where that, that is evident is university. <laughs> um, it, that's a struggle. Let me, let me just tell you, I, I graduated recently, but um, no, let, let me just clarify myself. The <laughs> education is not from the devil. <laughs> um, my procrastination is the main reason why I struggled with university, so, but that, that was the main struggle. But it always, when it always came to exam time, or when it came to assessment time, I always looked forward to the part of the exam where it was multiple choice. Praise you, Lord, for multiple choice, more Lord. I love it because the options are set. I absolutely love it. And you either have four, four op options, um, or I absolutely love it even more when it is just a true or false. 
that is God sent. That's how you know God is real and alive in your life when, when it's a multiple choice and, the, and it gives you two options, true or false. Or even better, when it, it is, um, when it is all of the above or none of the above because you know that that is the correct answer. If it says all of the above, always select that because it is the right answer. But I love, I love because they're trying to mess with you and you're like, ha, devil, I got you. <laughs> it's, it's all of the above. But I love that. I absolutely love that about multiple choice is because the options are set. The options are set. You can, get, you can face a difficult question. You, you don't even know what it's about. You didn't even study for it. That's me. <laughs> but the options are set. And it's the same thing when you're when, in this wild goose chase of following the Holy Spirit in life and, you, and when you're going through the adventure of life, you may encounter a situation that you do not know how to deal with. Maybe, maybe you caused it. Maybe, maybe, maybe God is trying to build you up or maybe it's just straight up from the enemy. But we have the options set. And you're sitting here, ben, ben, what are you talking about these options? I'm talking about what God says during these circumstances. I'm talking about the options he has set. And when you ask questions like, first of all, I believe he has two options. One, the obvious, the obvious one is when you say, hey, God, like, will, will, you, will, will you heal me right now? His, his first response, his first option is yes. Yes, I will take your anxiety now. Yes, I will deal with your addiction now. But I, I believe, I believe this, that there is a second option. And, and bear with me for, for a moment. And I believe there's a second option, and the first option is yes, but I don't believe, ready, just, just bear with me, I don't believe that the second option is no. I believe his second option is I have better. I have better for you, God. Why, 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 uh, why are my finances so good right now? It's because I have better for you. Why, why, did, why did that relationship just end? It's because I have better for you. Come on, do, do, do people need to hear that tonight? That God has better for you? Because so often I found myself that God doesn't actually just take away something from me, my addictions, my pain, my struggles. He doesn't take it away from me like that, that, that simply. And I wish he does. I wish, I wish he did. But I have this hope I have this truth. I have this option that is set in stone that if he doesn't do it now, he has better for me. I have better. Do you believe that tonight? I have better. And I love that going through the, the highs and lows of life that we actually have better. We have better for us. We do not have to settle. We do not have to live with our anxiety. We do not have to live with our addiction. We do not have to live with our depression. You know what? God actually has better for us. He has better. He has better. And I love that so much. And people, you guys might be sitting here thinking, man, this is just a feel-good message. No, this is not a feel-good message. This is a fact-filled message. This is a fact-filled message. And I love that. I love that the options are set for us through the highs and lows of life. I want to talk about a man in the Bible who has had to deal with the highs and lows of life, who has been through a very wild goose chase. And I want to talk about my boy, Joseph the Dreamer. Is anyone familiar with, with Joseph the Dreamer? Yeah, if, if, you, if you guys don't know, my boy Joseph, okay, he, he is the youngest in his family. He has 11 brothers, so he is spoilt rotten. Is there, is there anyone that is the youngest in the family? You the lucky ones. You, the eldest one, which is me, I had to pave the way. I had to cop it. I had to, I had to go to sleep at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. I look at my little brother. He's 10 years old and he's up to like 9 p.m. I'm like, you do not know the struggle I had to go through for you. You do not even know. He was the youngest one. He was, the, he, he, he was spoilt so much. So, and he was, he was literally the favorite. So he had 11 brothers. He, he was the favorite. My boy Joseph, literally in the Bible, his, his dad loved him so much. He was, the, he was the favorite. His dad made him a coat of many colors, which is what the Bible says. Um, and um, 
That's cool. But I, guys, picture with me right now. I'm probably thinking like the freshest, like freshest gear. He's like probably probably from the new Yeezy line and he's walking around. He's, he's got it on. He's like, I, I, you know when you're about to head downtown or when you're about to go to that party or when you're about to come to church and you look, out, you look at the mirror and you're like, oh. <laughs> I'm so fresh. This, this, this. This is Joseph. This is his every, every day. He, he wakes up, puts on his coat, and he's like, <laughs> what up? This, this, this is my boy, Joseph. He, he was the favorite, and he was the freshest. Joseph, Joseph. And, and he literally had this really cool coat, and he was, he was the favorite. And not only that, um, he had these dreams. He had these crazy awesome dreams that God would give him. And we look in Genesis 30, 37, verses 5 to 7. And the first, the first one is this. Now Joseph had a dream. I just want to pause there. Now Joseph had a dream. I just want to ask you right now, if you're taking notes or if you're kind of half listening, about to fall asleep, I just want to ask you this one question. I want to take it home. Do you have a dream? Do you have a dream? Now, Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more because listen to the dream. So he said to them, like, when you know your brothers hate you, you do not tell them this dream, <laughs> ready? He's like, he's like, hey, hey I, know you guys, I know you guys hate, hate me right now, but listen to this dream, which I've dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves, which are like pretty, pretty much bundles of like hay or wheat. We're binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, <laughs> my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood and all around me, they bowed to me. They, they bowed to my sheaf. <laughs> I'm so good. But <laughs> he had this dream. He had this crazy, crazy dream that literally like... It, it, was, it was insane because he was, he was just in this, like, this little farm boy who, who was really cool and fresh, but he, had this, he, he really believed that he had this dream. And the one thing that, that really I believe that would convict Joseph to actually share this dream is it had to be a God dream. It had to be a God dream. This was not any normal dream. This was not a normal dream. This was a God dream. And you're sitting here, what, what's a God dream? Can I just tell you? Mark Batterson de- defines a, a God dream as a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Oh, man, I read that. I was like, <laughs> so good. I'm going to say that again. A dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention is a God dream. That is a God dream. This is, this is not, let, let me give you an example, and I'm not going to dwell on this too quick, but in Luke, somewhere, somewhere, I think it's Luke 18, Jesus heals a blind man. And, and we've, we've all heard this story before. He, he like gets mud and like rubs it in his eyes, just absolutely hectic. Who says the Bible is boring? Come on, that's, that's mental, just getting mud and just like, boom, heals now. That, that, is, that is what I picture. But before that actually happened, Jesus was like, what do you seek? He asked this blind man, what do you seek from me? What do you want me to do? Now, the blind man his response wasn't, God, and this, this would be a human dream. This would be a normal dream. He, he didn't say, God, if, if you could just give me a walking stick so I, I, could, I, could, I could poke around. Or he's like, God, um, I, just, just give me someone to look after me. That, that's a human dream. No, he had a God dream. He knew his God. He knew his Savior. He's like, God, give me back my sight. Lord, I can get a walking stick. Lord, I can get a nurse, but only you can give me back my sight. That is a God dream, a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Do you have a dream? Do you have a dream? Joseph had a dream. He gets, he gets this second dream in, in verse 9. He says, then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I've dreamed another dream. I know you guys hate me, but listen to this. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars, which are you guys, bowed down to me. (laughs) It's this God dream. 
It's this God dream that he had. And, and what I love is that he was not scared about what people thought of his dream. He was not scared. He would still speak. He knew he was hated. He knew that his brothers despised him, but he was not scared to live out and speak out his dream. I feel like some of us are scared to, to live out our dreams, are scared to speak out our dreams because of what people will think of you. But when you realize that when God only has two options for you, yes, or I have better, don't be afraid to speak it out. Don't be afraid to live it out. Don't be afraid to study harder. Don't be afraid to stay up late. Don't be, don't be afraid to, to, to live out your God calling on your life, you know? Um, as, as you know, um, some of you guys might know, um, Tyler and I, we have this dream to transform social media. Transform social media. And, and, and starting off, it, it was kind of scary. It was actually kind of scary because we didn't know what people would think. We didn't know whether people would understand. And it, it was scary. But, but as, as we begin to step out, and honestly, I, I have 12,000 followers, which is cool. But Tyler is the real money maker. <laughs> She, I, I leech off her. <laughs> no, she, she has this amazing community that is, that is pushing nearly 40,000 women. I love that it's as we step out into our dreams, it's as we step out into our calling, and I love that God has more for Tyler. I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. Do you have a dream? Do you have a God dream? I absolutely love that. We read on in verse 19. So he's just told them of this story, and this one day they're all working out in the fields, and he, and he, and he approaches them to, to come work with them. And his brothers, they said, then they said to one another, look, the dreamer is coming. The dreamer. They were mocking him. But can I, can I tell you, I believe someone needs to hear this. There's always mocking in the making. There's always mocking in the making. Some of you guys are pursuing dreams. Some of you guys are chasing down your dreams. Some of you are going through this wild goose chase. And, and I feel like so often when, when people start to mock us, when people start to, to, to speak against our dream, it is so easy just to get disheartened and put the dream down. But there's always mocking in the making. If, if Jesus got mocked, expect to be mocked. Expect it. Expect it. See, see, see it as a sign. And I'm not saying to, to disregard um, wise counsel. I'm saying, I'm saying set your eyes, set your focus on your goals. Set your eyes, set your focus on your God dream. There's always mocking in the making. And what is about to happen to Joseph, and if you guys know this story a little bit, um, the best way I can kind of describe it to, to kind of cat and how I emphasize um, and relate to this story is um, back when I used to run. I used to run a lot. I used to. I was a ten kilometer runner. My my goal was to was to get to run ten kilometers in under forty minutes. I did it in thirty nine minutes and thirty seven seconds. Achieved that God dream, <laughs> um, and then God saved me, and I don't run anymore <laughs> um, because running is hard. And it, it just hurts me. It hurts me real bad, but I don't run. Anyway, I used to, I used to get up, run 12 kilom kilometers every morning, Monday to Friday. That was my thing. And um, I used to run in this little track that was near my house. And um, this one morning, I remember I was running. I was running, just doing my little thing. And I saw this senior group of people um, just casually running. And me being who I am, I was like, this is my opportunity <laughs> to show how good this little Asian can run. <laughs> and I was like, this is it, this is it. So I, I decided to, to pick up my pace a little bit, to look up and just like extend my strides a little bit and just kind of like just gracefully glide like a gazelle <laughs> in front of them and just kind of just like... <laughs> Yeah, this is me. And, I, was, and I, I decided to do that, and I did. And I was running, and I, and I just like kind of gallop past these guys. I'm just like, <laughs> this is easy for me. And I run past them. And because I, I run past them, and I'm probably about 50 meters ahead of them, and because this is not my usual way of running, I accidentally plant my foot down awkwardly and just feel it give way, just, hit, just feel this little... And I actually sprained my ankle on the spot 
50 meters ahead of this, this old senior walking group. <laughs> and I'm on the ground. I'm just laying there like, <laughs> trying, to keep, trying to keep the tears in. They, 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 they go past me, like, you all right? I'm like, fine, fine. And there's like tears come down my head. This is nothing. I, Pride comes before the fall. <laughs> can I just tell you? Can I just tell you? I was I was in pain. I was except your boy Joseph isn't really being prideful. Something is about to hit him hard. He has this calling over his life, and where he thinks he's about to take a few steps forward, a, a few steps forward. Sorry, he takes what looks like a step back. And I feel like so often in our life, we get these awesome, amazing encounters. I know some people are about to head off to conference this week, are about to go to Hillsong Conference, or if you actually love this church, you're going to INC Conference. (laughs) No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Go to conference. God is going to be at both of them. Um, It's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. I cannot wait to hear the revelations that you get. From, from this conference, but you're about to get this awesome encounter from conference. You know, I got my, I got my revelation about social media at conference too. And you're going to get this awesome encounter. You're like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. But be prepared to when you get home to carry that conference with you, to carry that same revelation with you, to carry that same calling, that same, the, the feelings might not be there, but let the faith still be there. We read in, in Joseph. In Genesis, sorry, 37, verse 24, and this is what they actually do because they hate him so much, they want to kill him. They actually, they took him and they cast him into a pit. They cast him and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. See, Joseph gets these two amazing God dreams that he's, he's, what seems like, it feels like he's about to rule the world. Literally, the sun, the stars, the, the moon, they all bow to me, man. I, I, I just felt it. There was something really good about it. I don't know. Pastor Brian Houston said it when he was preaching, and I felt this amazing feeling. And Doug said it this morning, and I just really vibed with that. That was so good. But then Monday morning hits, and you feel like you're in a pit. Or you, you have to go home, and you're back in that, that relationship where something just doesn't feel right, and, and, you, and, and you think about ending it, and you end it, and, and, and you feel like you're in a pit. You thought, man, I ended it, but why am I so sad? Why, why do I still miss that? Why, what is happening? And you feel like you're in a pit, and what feels like you're taking a step back. And so I know some people are in that situation right now. But can I just remind you, you still have your purpose in your pit. You still have your purpose in your pit. Will you still praise God in your pit? Will you still, will you still, will you still serve? Will you still give your best even though it feels like you're in a pit? Even though you, you feel like you've got this awesome dream but you're currently in a ditch? Will you, will you still praise? Will you, will you still serve? Will you still give your best Monday morning when you're in a job that you absolutely hate? Will you still worship God? Will you still be the best worker? Will you still study your best? Will you still save your best even though you don't feel like it? Will you still praise in your pit? You have your purpose in your pit. And what I found really interesting about this little piece of scripture in verse 24 is they they took the time to outline that the pit was empty and that there was no water in it. The pit was empty. And there was no water and there was, there, there was no resources. There was no natural resources to survive. And I feel like one of the biggest deterrences that we face when chasing down our dream is that, man, I literally do not have the resources right now. I literally do not have the finances or the opportunities or the education. I'm literally in the wrong city to chase down my dreams. But the thing about Joseph here is that he knew that if God doesn't say yes now, he has better for me. I may be in a pit now, but I have better. My God said it, so it will happen. My God gave me this dream, so he will see it through, even though I can't see anything, even though I can't see the resources, even though I I can't see the way. God, I know you will make the way. Even though I can't see it, I know my God has better. My God has better. 
basically what happens, he's, he's in this pit, and what happens is instead of killing him, his brothers decide, you know, what we're actually going to do, we're going to sell you off to some slaves, slave traders. He becomes a slave. And he gets sold off to, to this guy who, who is the, basically the chief of police in Egypt. The thing you need to understand about Egypt is during this time, they were literally the superpowers of the world. They were literally so, so powerful. And he's like, man, I thought I was going to rule this place, but right now I'm a slave in this place. What the heck is going on? God, you gave me this dream. What is happening? But I know you have better for me. I know you have a plan for me. And let me tell you, there's something special about people who know that God has better for them, but there's something even more special about people who live, who live that promise, who live, who live the fact that God has better for them. He was a slave. This, the, the chief of police, police bought him. And it says this in Genesis 39, verse 2, 3, The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did prosper in his hand. Prosper. I believe the Lord was with Joseph because Joseph knew that his God had better for him Always. Always. Even though it doesn't look like it now, I know, God, that if I draw close to you, you draw even closer. He knew that. He knew that. He, he, and it says that everything he touched, literally God, God blessed it. God blessed it. Even though he was, he was a slave, even though he just worked an admin job in a company that he didn't even really believe in, even though he, he hated studying, even though he gave it his best and God was with him. He knew that God had better. And I, I love this. I love this. Um, later in Genesis, we find out that not only did God bless everything that he touched, but um, the thing about Joseph was, it literally says this in the Bible, that he was handsome. Ooh, he was handsome. He was good looking. He was good, good looking. He was fresh and he was good looking. It's, it's pretty much like Chester. Chester Salcedo. <laughs> Chester Salcedo, he was worship leading in, in the orange and just like dropping some dance moves and stuff. I'm just like, man, I, I wish I was you. <laughs> Chester, he was, he was fresh and he was good looking. And, and what actually happens, really interesting, is that his, um, his slave master's wife, tries to seduce him. What a scandal. Who says, who says the Bible is boring? Oh my gosh. Like this, this, is, like the, the, this is like Gossip Girl or something like that. This is like legit. His, what a scandal. This, his master's wife tries to seduce him. How crazy is that? How crazy is that his master's wife starts? And just a side note, I feel like some people have this God dream right now and, and all of a sudden, real talk right now, if I could be real, there's, there's, there's that guy that is chatting to you or there's that girl that is chatting to you, trying to distract you. But and I know that some people right now, deep down, they feel that something's a little bit off. Something's a little bit off. And resist that temptation. Joseph, Joseph he, he gets this little thing and um, his master's wife tries to seduce him. He, and she's like, Joseph, hey, how, how you doing? Anyway, he's, he's, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I can't do that. Sorry, you, you're, you're, you're my master's wife. I can't do this. He, he flees from her. And what actually happens is she gets so offended by it, she accuses him of rape. Hectic stuff. Because of this accusation, he gets chucked into jail. He gets chucked into jail. And from, from being a, a, just this normal person, this normal 17-year-old slave, he, he, he gets put into this pit, and then he gets put into prison. From the pit to the prison. And right now, Joseph is he's sitting there like, what the heck? God, this God dream that you gave me all those years ago, Right now I'm sitting in this prison. Right now I'm sitting in this prison. And, and let, me just, let me just tell you right, r- real quick, I feel someone needs to hear this, but can I just tell you, God 
did not put you in this pit. God did not put you in this prison. If we look back at what happened to Joseph, it was his brother's bitterness. It was, it was, it was, it was that, that, that lady's um, lust. It, it, is, it is not God. It is the enemy. It is the enemy working. I feel like someone needs to hear that tonight. It is not your fault. It is not your fault what happened in your past. It is not your fault what, what your abusive dad did. It is not your fault that your, 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 your close family member got cancer. It is not your fault. It is not your fault. Joseph is, Joseph is in this prison right now. And he, he still knows that he has this God dream. And he knows that God has better for him. He has better for him. He has this gift. He, 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 he's really good at interpreting dreams. And while he's in jail, he actually works all the way up to the top of the prisoner hierarchy that he actually helps the, the prison guards in their daily duties. It literally happens in the Bible because God just blessed whatever he touched. And he's, he's there and he finds out there's a few guys in the jail that are having these really strange reoccurring dreams. And he, and he, and he interprets a few, he interprets this one dream. And this guy's like, man, I get this weird dream. He's like, bro, I know what that means. It actually means like you're going to get out of here in like three days and you're going to be working closely with Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt. The ruler of Egypt. Sure enough, three days later, he gets released and he's like, bro, all I ask is that you remember me. Just, just drop my name somewhere. Tag me in your Insta post somewhere. <laughs> just, just remember me. Remember me. This guy's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Anyway, he gets to the palace and completely forgets about Joseph. Oof. He started as a slave when he was 17 years old. Started as a slave. And right now, it's, he's, he's close to somewhere in his 30s. Somewhere, put late 20s, pushing his 30s. And he's, he's sitting in jail. And then one day, Pharaoh is starting to get these really, really, really strange dreams. Doesn't know what happens. Because Pharaoh is like, and Egypt is literally the, the, the superpower of the world. He, Pharaoh gets all these magicians, all these witches, literally every single person that he can grab in and try and interpret his dream. But no one can interpret it. And this guy who, who Joseph interpreted his dream, this guy's like, hey, I know this guy. His name's Joseph. He's, he's actually in prison. And I was meant to mention him like eight years ago. But <laughs> no biggie, no biggie. All good. Um, can he come interpret your dream? Joseph comes and, and he interprets the dream. And he's correct. Pharaoh really vibes with this interpretation. He's like, wow, this, is, this, 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 this guy's the man. Like, he actually, he actually can... He actually... He actually interpreted my dream. And Joseph's like, yeah, like, so in seven years, you're going to experience this, this crazy famine and you guys need to prepare for it. And, jo- and Pharaoh's like, yeah, wow, 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 that, that, that is so good. And in Genesis 41, Genesis 41, this is where, the, where we pick it up. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this? A man whom in the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all of this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. Get this. You shall be over my house, and all the people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. He was interpreting this dream. He was living out his calling. He's living out his God dream. And what the devil used to mock Joseph, God used to make Joseph. I feel like some people need to hear that. You're being mocked. You're getting, you're getting, you, you don't feel like you can do it anymore. People have spoken against you. Your finances have spoken against you. The doctor has spoken against you. They're mocking you. But can I tell you, God is making you tonight. God is making you tonight. And in, this, in, in the process that took over 13 years, 13 years from 17 to 30, he basically becomes the prime minister in this point. 13 years, God takes him from the pit to the prison to the palace. Why? So that Joseph doesn't get the glory, but God gets the glory. 
at the end of, this, of your story, you, you can talk to some Christians who have been through amazing journeys just like Joseph, and they, they will tell you the same thing. If not for God's grace, that sustained me. If not for his power, if not for his purpose in my life, God's going to get the glory. It's going to be awesome. God has better for you. God has better for you. How amazing. I believe there's some people in this room that are finding that hard to believe right now. Hard to believe going through a season where whether they're in a pit, whether they're in, whether they're in prison with their family or, or with their finances or are they in a toxic relationship. But can I tell you right now, God has better for you. God has better for you. You don't feel like you can get out of this in this wild goose chase that is life. Can I just tell you, God has better for you. Thanks for joining us here at Christian Outreach Church. We hope you've been inspired by this message and challenged in the best of ways to see your life and faith grow. Stay right here on our YouTube channel for great uplifting content that we update every single week. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Hey, thanks again for spending your time with us. We would love to connect with you. So click the links in the description to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website.